Let's do one more example of converting percent composition information into an empirical formula. In this case, we're told we have an unknown hydrate. It was analyzed, it was found to contain 20.66% iron by mass, 39.35% chlorine by mass, and finally, 39.99% water by mass. Because it's a hydrate, because it contains the elements iron, chlorine, and then because it's a hydrate, water, we know generically that as empirical formula, our answer will be iron to some value x, Cl for chlorine to some value y, and dot some value n number of water molecules. So our goal here in three, possibly four steps, determine what the values are of x, y, and n. So to do that, we can do that in three or four steps. First step is convert our percent composition information, the percent values given, into grams. And if we always assume we do this calculation, if we assume we have exactly 100 grams of the compound, then our percent values become the same as our gram values. In other words, for the iron, a, if it's 20.66%, that means in 100 grams, because percent is per 100, that means we have the same number, 20.66 grams of iron. For chlorine, same idea. We have 39.35% chlorine. And that means in 100 grams, we have the same value in grams, 39.35 grams of chlorine. And finally, for water, it's 39.99% water by mass, we're told. So that means we have the same number in grams of water in 100 grams of compound. So to convert our percent values that were given into gram values, it's the same number based upon the assumption we have 100 grams of compound. Our next step is to then take these gram values and to convert them into moles. Because when we express an empirical formula, this ratio, if it's Fe1Cl2 or Fe1Cl3, whatever those uh, subscripts happen to be, those numbers represent mole ratios of each piece of this ionic compound. So we're gonna convert our mass values <clears throat> into mole values. So our general idea is convert grams into moles. And we can always do that regardless of the context by using the molar mass of the substance as our conversion factor. So we have for iron to begin with, we have in 100 grams compound, we have 20.66 grams of iron, Fe. I wanna convert that into moles, equivalent number of moles of iron. And so for that, we have our periodic table information. So for iron, we look it up and it's 55.85 grams per mole is its molar mass. So I divide in each case, 55.85 grams of iron is equivalent to one mole of iron. So we have 20.66 divided by 55.85 gives a value of 0 0.3699. Two, let's keep an extra digit, 0 0.36992 moles of iron. So once again, in 100 grams of compound, we have this mass of iron, and then that mass of iron is equivalent to this number of moles of iron. We'll do the same thing for the other two pieces here, the chlorine and the water. So for chlorine, we have a 39.35 grams of chlorine in 100 grams compound. Divide that by its molar mass. <clears throat> One mole of chlorine, chlorine atoms, not the elemental chlorine, Cl2, but rather just Cl, has a mass of 35.45 grams. So divide this number by 35.45. We convert this number of grams into the equivalent number of moles. So you have 39.35 divided by 35.45 gives us 1.1100, keeping an extra digit. So in 100 grams of the compound, we have this number of moles of iron and this number of moles of chlorine. And finally for water, we're told we have in 100 grams of compound, 39.99 grams of water. 
just grams of chlorine. And then convert from grams of chlorine to moles of, sorry, I'm sorry, grams of water to moles of water, we use the molar mass of water. So the molar mass of water, of course, is going to be two times the mass of hydrogen plus the mass of oxygen. So the molar mass of water would be two times 1.008, two times hydrogen's value plus oxygen's value of 16. Gives us a total mass of 18.016. So we have one mole of water. It's a mass of molar mass of 0 0.18.016 grams. And likewise, when we divide our mass of water by the molar mass of water, specifically 39.99 divided by 18.016, gives us the number of moles of water equivalent to this mass of water. So 2.219694. Yeah, uh, then 2.2197 moles of water. So our second step is convert our mass of each component, mass of iron, mass of chlorine, mass of water, into the equivalent number of moles of each of these components. And then finally, because empirical formulas are always expressed as lowest whole number ratios of one another, we need to take these values and find the lowest whole number ratios. And we can do that by taking the larger of these numbers and always dividing it by whatever is the smallest. So notice here that the iron is the smallest number of moles. So I, because I have three components here, I'm gonna set up two ratios. My first ratio is we compare the moles of chlorine to moles of iron. So according to my calculations, we have then 1.1100 moles of chlorine compared to the 0 0.36992 moles of iron. And that gives me a mole chlorine mole cl iron ratio, 1.100, 1.1100 rather, divided by 0 0.36992, a mole chlorine and mole iron ratio of 3.0006. 3.0006, which is very, very close to exactly three. So we could say then we have in our compound, three moles of chlorine for every one mole of iron. That's what this ratio tells us. We'll do the same thing to uh, normalize the number of moles of water to also one per mole of iron. So we have moles of water to moles of iron. And so when we do this, our numerator for however many ratios we need to create will always be the same. It's always whichever part we have the fewest moles of. So moles of water is going to be our 2.2197 moles of water compared to, once again, the number of moles of iron, 0 0.36992 moles of iron. Gets us then our ratio of 2.2197 moles of water divided by 0 0.36992 moles of iron, gives us a ratio of 6.000486. So 6.0005, which is very, very close to six moles of water per one mole of iron. So we found that from our experimental data, that in this compound, based upon its given percent composition, this compound contains three moles of chlorine per one mole of iron and six moles of water per one mole of iron. So then putting all this information together into our final answer, say that for every one mole of iron, understood one, we have then three moles of chlorine and six moles of water. So this compound is has a formula of Fe, Cl3.6H2O, and of course its name would be iron three chloride hexahydrate. Because these ratios came out to be very, very close to whole numbers, then we can skip step four, where we don't need to multiply the mole ratios by some factor in order to get the whole numbers. These values given here that were created, were made up, so your experimental numbers likely won't be as perfect as these numbers came to be.